Dr. Bruce Glick, you know, when I say that name, I get the sort of the uh, goosebumps, you know. Glick had this incredible persona. He's a throwback to the old days, the Renaissance man, driven by curiosity, is willing to share, is willing to mentor, is willing to give. But really it was Bruce Glick's work in discovering the functionality of chickens that contributed to where we are today. It didn't matter what he was doing, he just gave it his 110%. And that was his attitude. He could do anything he put his mind to. That's how he got into the poultry science part of this, because his professor at University of Massachusetts, the guy looked at him like, you're a city guy. You've never even worked on a farm before. And he said, well, I'll work on a farm. And he was like, you can't work on a farm. You don't know anything about it. Well, he proved them wrong. <laughs> I didn't realize until much later on exactly how important his work was. It was a serendipitous discovery that he made that this particular organ called the bursa fibricius that's located in the rear end of uh, chickens is the basis of humoral immunity. Humoral immunity is really what we refer to as antibodies. So nobody knew what it was, they just thought, ah, it's an organ that's out there, who cares? Nobody cared for 300 years until Bruce Glick comes along. You can harken back to the early 1950s and him and his colleagues, they attempt to send this particular paper describing this foundational discovery to Science Magazine. The editors sent back a note that this was uninteresting and then he goes on to publish it in the Journal of Poultry Science. It becomes a citation classic, and the Poultry Science Society of America actually designates Dr. Glick's work as the most foundational in poultry science. Not only was his science foundational for uh, knowledge about chickens and, and geese and turkeys, but also for human health and well-being. It is at the basis of what we do today in terms of cancer treatments and the development and deployment of vaccines. It's helping in rheumatology, it's helping in childhood cancers. That sort of a treatment that's happening in the year 2018 would not have been possible without that foundational, seminal work that was done by Bruce Glick and all the others that came along after him.